So here we have our character. I've placed him in a kind of silly pose just so you can see a couple of features of this rig and things that hopefully you were successfully able to implement. So obviously we have the, um, the options to adjust the knee, the ball of the foot, and the toe of the foot. Right, and we were able to see that ball animation a little more clearly. Um, and if we do both the ball and the toe in conjunction, we should get this roll up onto the foot. Now, your placement control should move your character around while the feet stay in place on the ground. Now, we want to be careful not to stretch our character beyond the length of the leg, because if we do, you'll see that it forces the leg to come up off the ground. Now, some people think that's how the rig, how they're supposed to make the character's foot come off the ground, but it's not. What you want is to be able to show that you are lifting the character's foot. You want to be in control of where this foot is at all times. So be really careful when you're pulling the character's hips to not extend the leg completely and pull the character up off the ground. Now, if you rigged this correctly and you followed along closely enough, once I have my character in this pose, like sometimes I just, you know, I've been messing around with the rig and I'm like, oops, I need to get back to the way I started. If we rigged it correctly and we froze transformations on the curves when we were supposed to, if I select all of these curves and I just type zero into my translates and rotates, you'll see that for the most part, it puts my character back where it started. The only other controls that are missing is on this knee ball toe. And if I type zero into those as well, this is the pose in which my character was rigged. Now, I usually like to, th this is important because you're going to mess up along the way and you're going to feel like you need to restart in parts of it. And so it's important to be able to get your character back to this pose. If for some reason you didn't, you may want to set a keyframe on it before you start animating um, in the frames you're not planning to render. So maybe you would just render frames 50 through, you know, 150 and you would set a keyframe on all of these in the bind pose here. Now mine, I'm able to zero out pretty easily, and so it's not really that big of a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and start animating. Now, I'm going to make my contact pose, but I'm not going to make it first because I want to do this animation like a scene, like my character is moving um, from one location to the other. And to do that, I want to start pose where my character is just standing there. And then I want to move into my first pose of my walk cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and pose my character a little more casually. This is a little stiff and I know he's a robot, but uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and sort of rotate this. I always like to rotate my knee to kind of point in the same direction as my foot for the most part. And then I can kind of move my character back and maybe add just a little bit of rotation. So even though this isn't that much different, it's now got a little bit more personality, right? Now this is important. All of these controls, we for, for pose to pose animation to work the way it's supposed to, I need to be setting keyframes on all of my controls for every pose. Um, I can show you this as an example of why we need to do this. Let's open up a new version of Maya. And I've maybe shown this in previous videos, but this is just as a reminder. Um, if I'm animating my ball from here to over here, then on frame one, I'll hit S to set a keyframe. And I'm using auto key. So let's say I move to frame 30 and I do this, right? And I'm like, perfect, my animation works perfectly. But you'll notice on frame 30, I only have a keyframe on translate Z. And that means anything I change somewhere else is going to mess up this pose, right? So if I go to frame 15 and I do this, then now my animation looks like this. And that pose that I worked on for frame 30 is not going to be what I actually made. So the same happens with our character rig. I need to make sure that I am nailing down every pose. 
by setting a keyframe on every control at the same keyframe. So that can be a little annoying to people because they'll want to you know, manually go through here and shift select and that's just a lot of clicking. Another error sometimes people make is sometimes they don't turn off some of these parts of the rig and they drag select and they end up setting keyframes on things that will mess up the rig. So a clean way in which we can actually start setting our keyframes is to make a way that I can select the entire rig, the entire parts that I want to key with one button click. So if I go to my custom tab right here in my shelf, I'm just going to make a button that selects all of that. Now to do that, I'm going to open up my script editor. It's down here in the bottom right hand corner, right below the auto key. If I click that, you'll see that, I know we talked about this earlier, anything I click in my scene, it sort of, it sort of pops up here, right? And the, the mail script or the script that allows us to select something, specifically this control, is select-r root control or CTRL semicolon, right? So if I were to copy that and paste that down here in my mail, let me, let me do it when it's not selected, you'll see that it selects my, my control. So what I can do is I can do edit, clear all, and then I can deselect. And so you'll see by deselecting, it's getting select dash CL for clear. And then I can hold down shift and select this, this, and this. So that means this little piece of script is what selects all of the keyable parts of my rig, that piece of text. Well, I can make a button that runs that script whenever I click it. And it's really easy to do. All I have to do is highlight that text, middle mouse click, and drag that to my shelf. Now, when I release it, it's going to ask me to save this script to a shelf. And since this is a Mel script, I'll choose Mel. And so now I get a button right there that whenever I click it, selects all of my character's rig. So this is a really nice way of being able to pick certain things really quickly without having to hold down shift and dig around in there until you find it. Sometimes you'll get a whole bunch of buttons up here and it'll be a little confusing what is what. So you can right click on this and say edit and under shelves, I can give it a label icon. So you'll see that it has that selected. I'll call this a C H A R. So that selects my whole character. I'll save all shelves. And so now that's saved. Now it's important to remember this script saves with the computer, not with the Maya file. So th if you're working on this at home and then you take this to school to work on it, this button may not come with you. It probably won't. So you'll have to make that button again later, or you can go in here under edit and just save that in a text document and then create that new button once you get to the new location. Um, but now what I have is the ability to click this button here to select all of the controls. And so this is where I want my character to start. So I'm just going to set a keyframe on all of those controls by hitting S. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move from this keyframe straight into my first contact pose. Let me go ahead and open up the contact poses again so you can see those. We're going to go straight into this contact pose, right? Now, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start posing that and talking about it as I pose it so you can sort of understand what I'm trying to do when I'm doing this. So to get into that contact pose, I need to decide which leg is going to be contacting first. So I'm going to go ahead and select this foot. This is the one I would like to go forward. So I'm going to move it forward and it's going to mess up just for a second, but that's okay because now I can move my other characters or my character's body forward and sort of find out where I want this to be in the middle. Now it's going to be tempting to just accept this as the foot rolls up as correct, but it's not. So I'll come back to that. So I'm going to move this over, sort of rotate it. I'm just going to start posing my character to look like 
that contact pose. Now, I probably moved my foot too far forward, so I'll move it back a little bit. And I think the frustrating part about this for some people is it's going to look broken for a while until you get it fixed correctly. Now, I want to roll back on my heel. I could have made a control that would allow me to do that, but I want to, I want to have to kind of eyeball this a little bit when I do it. So maybe something like this and maybe rotate my character a little bit more toward the center. So there we go. We're starting to get a little bit more of the correct looking contact pose. And I can aim my knee out just a little bit. Now in order to fix what's happening here with the, the foot here, I need to roll up on the ball and the toe. So for mine, I'm going to select both of them and control roll until my knee starts to bend again. right? Because again, I don't want it to go completely straight. So until we get something like this. Now this will work, but I could add probably a little bit more to this just by rotating my character like this just a little bit. Now notice when I do that, what's happening is my character's left or my character see my character's right hip is moving forward and my character's left hip is moving backwards. And that means I'll be able to push this step length a little bit further that way. So I can do like this, and I can make that step just a little bit bigger, right? And so that's one of the ways I can kind of extend that. If I need my character to make a much bigger step, maybe I twist the hips a little bit more. Um, I could roll up on the ball and the toe a little bit more, and that gives me just a little bit more room to stretch forward. So I don't want to go too big. I just want this to be kind of a casual walk, not like he's really in a hurry or anything. Now, again, I don't like stretching my leg out perfectly straight, but you don't want it to be too bent either. You want it to be pretty straight um, without locking completely. So something like this. Right? And I usually like to rotate my toes out just a touch just so my character's toes aren't pointing perfectly forward. So we'll find it somewhere in there. Again, this may be a little much on the rotation. So maybe something like that. I will pull that leg back just to make sure I'm not locking the knee too much. And there, we'll call this my contact pose. So now that I have my contact pose, select the entire character, and I made a mistake. I accidentally set all of those keyframes on frame one again because I have auto key turned on. So that's okay, I don't mind. And that's a really nice, um, you, you will end up doing that as well. So this is a nice little learning uh, opportunity here. I'll just go out to frame 15 and hit S. And to kind of get back to my neutral pose again, um, I can zero this out and zero this out. And so now we're back to our bind pose. It's not perfectly neutral. Um, and then I can kind of rebuild that pose on pose one the way I had it, which was something like this. And my character sort of back like this. I think I sort of shifted the weight a little bit, had some angle on there. Right, so maybe something like that. So again, select everything. I want to make sure there's a keyframe on everything on frame one. So I hit S. I want to make sure there's a keyframe on everything on frame 15. So I hit S. And so then if I use the greater than and less than keys, it's also the period and comma keys, I can step back and forth between those two poses. And I'm just seeing the poses. So I hit Q to hide the rotation option and so you can see that now I can see my neutral pose and my next pose my contact pose and Maya is going to create the in-betweens now Maya is not going to create the in-betweens perfectly and we'll talk about that a little bit more later as the animator it's our job to make sure this transition works as well but it's not time for that yet um, in the next video we will jump into making some more of the poses